Hey, my name's Meg and I'm on the Isle of Lewis. We're staying with two artists called Matthew DL and Louise Scullion and they're letting us stay in their amazing guest house Hona in Uig. In return for letting us stay here, we're gonna build them a dry stone wall. We're building it in a circle to block the winds so that Louise can grow some fruit and vegetables. We've never built a wall like that before, so it's a learning curve. We've been here for five days so far, and since then we've just been settling in and getting used to the environment. We've done two days of building on our dry stone wall, and neither of us have injured ourselves yet, so that's good. Matthew Dio and Louise Scullion are the artists we're staying with and the people who built this place. They're multi-award winning artists who mainly do public art that focuses in on human connection with nature. It's really amazing to stay with people who have had like a long-standing career in art and creativity and they've taught us a lot already and we've only been here for a week so I can't wait to see what happens. Life for me over the last year has just been really crazy and busy. I graduated from Edinburgh College of Art in May, been living in a van, my best friend got married, my sister had a baby, things have just been really full on and busy so the goal here for the next month is to reconnect with ourselves and with nature and to take life a bit slower and to really hone in on our creativity and build a wall of course. I'm going to be filming what we get up to and maybe make a little YouTube video. If you're here, thanks for watching. <laughs>
Thank you. Yay. Veggie bacon and veggie sausage. Bacon. Thanks. So, this is what we've done so far. It's day two on our dry stone wall build. But as you can see, we're getting there. It is really difficult. We've never done anything like this before. Um, so yeah, there's Lady. What are you doing? What are you doing? These are the piles of rocks that we're moving. It's a nice day. It can be a little bit frustrating. Um, we've had to start again a few times. Goodness. Good then. Why do you want to eat that? Don't eat that, that's gross, that's just soil. Might not look like much, but I'm quite proud of it. It's going to be one of those ones that's so hard to finish. Yeah, once I push and pull at the end. Or just like to know when to stop <laughs> is always the hardest part. If you guys are wanting to start a new TV series, we just finished re-watching my favourite TV series that's ever been made called Flowers by Will Sharp, starring Julian Barrett and Olivia Coleman, and it is a cinematic masterpiece. I was crying with laughter and then five seconds later, bawling my eyes out. We are going to find the blowhole. Someone's built this little thing. Come here, lady, come here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. We are on our way to see a blowhole. Um, and we're just having a little sit down, found this little windbreak that someone's made. Me and Connor were doing a plastic clean up on the beach the other day, and we found two dead seals. And I just assumed that they were dead because of like plastic in the ocean or something. And then we noticed that they were just missing their heads. They were missing their brains. It was really weird. And then when we told Louise and Matthew, they told us that the orca suck out the brains of the seals because it makes them high, which I just find amazing. So I thought I'd share it with you. 
Oh, yeah, time to get to this blowhole. Wonder what that was. Sea foam. We found some sea foam. That looks so cool. Oh my god, I want to get in there so badly. Oh, look at it. Oh my god, that's cool. That is very cool. What do you reckon, lady? Someone's built all these really cool little things. What's going on with your jacket, mate? I wonder who built that? Who built this? Look at this landscape. Isn't that beautiful light? It takes us a really long time to get anywhere because we get so distracted. Where's the blowhole? This must be it. Oh God. Is it epic? Oh my God. Let's go. Oh, oh, that's cool. <gasps> Whoa. Lady, be careful. I wish I could explain to you how big this hole is, but I just don't think I can. Holy shit. That's big. That's a big hole. Wednesday today, it's our second week here. We're exactly halfway through the trip today. Um, we've spent the last couple of days inside because there's been 75 mile an hour winds. So we just stayed inside. I did a bit of painting and journaling and Lady had some serious recovering to do because a few days ago we were out in the snow um, filming some deer and then we drove on to the next spot and we were going to take the dog for a walk and have some lunch but then I let her out of the van and when I turned around she'd gone. Um, she doesn't normally do that so we started to panic, climbed to the highest point to look for her but we couldn't see her and then I saw her chasing some deer about a mile away going towards the hills. Um, luckily it was snowing so we could 
follow her tracks. If it wasn't snowing, I genuinely don't know if she'd still be here today. It was really, really scary. We ended up walking for about three miles, um, following her tracks and the deer tracks. I, at one point I got so desperate that there was a raven circling above us, sort of croaking. And I said, please tell me where the dog is. Take me to the dog. I just like, I just did it. I don't know why I was just so desperate feeling like crazy. And then, you know, I didn't pay much notice to the raven after that. I just continued following the tracks and then and then we ended up finding her. She was stood on top of a hill. She could barely walk, she could barely stand, and she has a big cut, well, a cut on her face. Um, so Connor had to carry her back for the whole three miles through the snow. Um, I didn't notice until after we'd got back that the raven had actually flown off in the direction that Lady was in, which I then again just brushed off as a coincidence. Then when we told Louise and Matthew about it, they told us about how ravens and corvids have had an ancient symbiotic relationship with humans since hunter-gatherer times. And early humans would work together with the ravens to find prey and find deer. And ravens are still known to do that with wolves today. So learning that fact was actually amazing and the only good thing about that whole experience. Um, today we went for a swim in the waterfall. It was really cold but it was lovely and now we're on Shell Beach and we're gonna look for some shells and look for some things. Let's go! So calm today. Considering those 75 mile an hour winds yesterday, you just wouldn't believe it, would you? Day four on our dry stone wall. <sighs> hey, today we did a lot of editing on our computers and then went for a little walk. Yesterday was pretty similar. We edited, worked on our computers, and then went for a walk at Mangosta Beach when it was lovely golden hour sun. It was really nice. Um, and tonight we are going to Stornoway to go to an arts talk in Anne Lanter Art Centre. So I'm really excited for that. Um, just been doing a bit of journaling. We journal every day. Um, We've been doing that for a while. I, I've journaled every day for the last like 700 days, but since we've been here, we've been doing a lot more journaling, uh, which is really nice. It's really nice to take some time each day to check in with yourself and be present and write about the day. So I recommend you start doing some journaling. Um, yeah, so we're off to Stornoway. Before I go to Stornoway, I need to take a second to plug some of my friends' Epic Knitwear. I'll put in the description how you can buy it for yourself. This is uh, my lobster bag by my friend Rowan, Lobster Knitwear. And then these Epic hats that I commissioned from Lottie Thomas. And you should commission some as well of your favourite animals. This one was for a film that we made. And this one, I'm going to wear this one to Stornoway so that everyone thinks I have problems. Okay, see you then. We just got back from Stornoway and the art talk was so amazing. I feel very inspired. It was um, director of Edinburgh Arts Festival, Kim McAleese, um, talking about 
her role as the director of Edinburgh Arts Festival. And then a talk from uh, Mary Gilly, um, who's an artist who lives on the Isle of Lewis. And she does land-based art and just did a really inspiring talk about her relationship with nature and her relationship with the land. And we've both come back feeling ready to make some work. Um, we also did a big Tesco shop which is our least favourite activity. Um, and yeah, ready for bed. Ready for bed, ready for bed. It is currently six o'clock in the morning roundabout and we've been up doing some editing and working. The sun hasn't risen yet and then we just got shocked by some crazy thunder and lightning. Yeah. Oh! oh! Yes! Shit, that was mental. The sun is slowly coming up. It's going to be a rainy day. Look what we've got. <laughs> Bacon, 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 bacon. Hello everyone, it's Meg and it is the 29th of January and we are in Mangaster Bothy. This bothy was built by John and Lorna Norgrove in memorial for their daughter, Linda Norgrove. And you can find out more about what that is and what they do at www.lindanorgrovefoundation.org. So we've had a busy few days. Um, it's been really stormy again. There's been lots of rain and thunder and lightning and 80 mile an hour winds. So we've been locked inside the house a lot. Um, which has been good because we got some editing done and yeah, got some work done. Um, we also had dinner with some of the locals and they told us all about the crofting lifestyle and what that entails and what it's like and I think it sounds amazing. We got here a few hours ago and watched the sunset um, and then another couple arrived and they wanted to stay in the bothy, but we got here first, so that was awkward. Um, if you don't know what bothy is, it's a Scottish word, I think, that um, it's basically like a little hut that is really designed for like one or two nights, and they originally were used for, not this one, because obviously this is a new build one, but originally they are like across the highlands, and they were used for shepherds to sleep in, in the, during the season when they were looking after their herd. So generally you don't need to book them, you just sort of show up, but you do need to book this one. Um, so luckily we had booked and that other couple hadn't, so we got to stay. Um, but generally you just show up and normally there's, there's, more, than, there's more than enough space for, for like four people normally. Um, because there's no beds, there's just like a bench or the floor, but this is a really, really small one. Um, it's often used as a whale watching spot, so we were hoping to see some orca or whales, but it's not really the right time of year for that, and it's very, very rough out there, so it's a bit hard to see anything other than the waves. So yeah, we're gonna cook some dinner on the fire, and hopefully, yeah, and uh, watch some movies and do some journaling and read some books.
Hello everyone, we've just woken up and it's like half eight, which is quite shocking because we wake up at 6am every day in the house. So we've actually had quite a lie in for us and was, I feel quite well rested really. Yeah. Um, sore but well rested. Yeah, sore but well rested. It's like one of those nights where you wake up a couple times but then like had good solid few hours you know, in between waking up, so it was a good night. Um, Connor was saying how it's kind of womb-like in here because you have the sound of the sea and the white noise. Yeah, I was pretty much the main character in there, to be honest. I was sort of like crushed up against <laughs> the wall. <laughs> <sighs> gonna make some coffee and go home and I think it's probably gonna be raining today and tomorrow and the next day so I'm glad we really made the most of the day of sunshine that we had that there's a deer a young deer stuck in this fence like behind this fence line so the task is going to be to try and rescue it okay we need to open that gate somehow without accidentally pushing it back this way it's going to be a bit of a struggle this oh god oh my god i think it's mouth bleeding connor i've lost it It's out, it's out, it's out. Uh, I had to film it escaping on my phone because it was a bit of a scramble, but it kept smacking its head against these fence posts in an attempt to escape. Really sad. It must have been trying it for days. God, poor thing. We're on the final stages of the wall, which is digging out the layer of grass so that Louise can put a layer of topsoil on to grow her stuff. It's hard work, but it's satisfying. Oh, fucking rocks everywhere. So these little rocks that you put into the gaps, they're called the hearting, which I think is quite a nice name because it's like the heart of the, rock, the wall. Um, they really are the ones that stop the wind getting in. <laughs> Dancing on the hill, the girls are doing a high 
еще не судит Это сын, где все ведут Где на трассе I said you're rolling on the heather and you're dancing on the hill The girls are doing a highland fling You pick up all the rubbish and you put it in the bin Cause every you don't then that's the shit And that's the way we do it, the way we do it in the western eyes And that's the way we do it, the way we do it in the western eyes tomorrow we've got to get the ferry back to mainland and our time on the Isle of Lewis has come to an end and we're both really gutted about it because it's been so amazing. Hona, this place is so great and beautiful and such a great vehicle to allow you to connect with nature and connect with your own creativity and if you want to stay in Hona then I will put the link in the description because I really recommend everyone coming to the Isle of Lewis specifically to Uig and specifically to Hona. Our host Louisa Matthew have just taught me so much about nature and animals and the landscape and art and I feel so inspired and driven leaving this place. Everyone said that it would be really bleak here and the weather would be really bad and the weather was bad it certainly was not bleak. Um, the weather was powerful and the rain and the elements were actually really inspiring. We lived through three storms while we were here and I actually loved it. Came here with no expectations, I didn't know what to expect and that just made it so wonderful being here and everything that we experienced was such a gift and I cannot wait to come back to the Isle of Lewis as soon as possible. So yeah, we're going to get the ferry home in two days. Um, and if you're still here at this part of the video, hats off. I'm not sure if watching me build a wall in a rainy island is really that entertaining, but if it was, I'm glad that you watched it and enjoyed this journey with me. Um, maybe I'll make another video one day. And yeah. See ya. There's accordions and spins, so that's the way we like our chin Five o'clock at 3 a.m., that's the way it's always been Guitars, accordions and spins, that's the way we like our chin Five o'clock at 3 a.m., that's the way it's always been And that's the way we do it, and that's the way we do it And that's the way we do it, the way we do it in the Western Who says hey there? No one. <laughs>